I feel that the whole education system needs to be tweaked a bit. We have to solve the mismatch between the education we are offering our young people and the needs of the job market both at home and abroad. Young people are the workforce of the future. One of the things we try to do is make sure that young people have an opportunity to rewrite their future and not fall into the default future that everybody is saying, oh, this is how it's going to be. If this is how it's going to be, then nothing will change it. It's important to us that young people have aspirations, that they be able to fulfill their aspirations, and that they have and see a future. If the jobs are not there, then all of the skills are not going to provide the opportunities that they're demanding. Investing in girls is in fact the best way that societies can boost their own GDP. Increasingly we are finding the young people turning around and saying, I want to start my own business, I want to succeed, but I also want to help the communities. And one of the best ways in which I can help those communities is by developing something that supports natural capitalism, the way the world in which we work. It is not by accident that entrepreneurship is the way to go in terms of improving the unemployment rate that we're sitting with. They can start and grow their own businesses. So they're really providing sort of the, the infrastructure and the foundation in place for those youth to succeed. Young people need a job. We need to help them create those jobs. But something we also find out is they already have the environmental conscious. They're already doing it. We sometimes don't need to explain it to them because they know it, because they live it. Recovering from a recession like this and a crisis like this gives an opportunity to do something new, to do new things, to find new sectors, new areas where we can put young people with appropriate training, skilling, coaching and counselling into new job growth areas. This is also a tremendous opportunity to forge new partnerships there are a lot of, of solutions. There's a lot that we know about how to solve and tackle the issue, but the scale of the problem is very, very large indeed. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome all of you to this ECOSOC special event to discuss ways in which to strengthen partnerships to promote opportunities and improvements for youth employment. Ladies and gentlemen, across the globe, too many young people are jobless and disaffected. Some are poor, some have dropped out of school, some are highly educated, but all have few or no immediate prospects. As I'm standing here, as we all of us are in this room right now, do you imagine how many young kids in Senegal somewhere are planning the trip of their lifetime? Probably the last trip of their, of their life for most of them. They, don't, they just don't know it yet. Right now, most of them are planning to get into little fishermen's boats and try to make it to Europe, to Spain, so that they can get a job. Well, the problem is most of them won't make it. What I see in five years is greater uh, private-public partnerships uh, to scale up these uh, projects. I see us uh, moving together, particularly with development partners, um, to uh, institutionalize these projects and they become a way of life across the country. The good news is we have a number of examples of projects which are working, which are actually uh, enabling young people to find employment and equipping them with the skills. Uh, the bad news is we don't have enough of them and the ones that we have are not very carefully documented. We do believe that in today's world, I mean, the, the key is connectivity, connecting innovators, connecting uh, private entities with public entities and connecting uh, cities, uh, individuals, etc. It is about responsibility. It's about whether companies, unions and governments are prepared to sit at the table and negotiate a national solution where employers will take on young people, but also where the framework, the enabling framework for creating those jobs is put in place because that's the biggest challenge. I think entrepreneurship, particularly for that segment, needs to be coupled with mentoring. It needs to be coupled with social networks as well as capital. It cannot just be entrepreneurship for entrepreneurship's sake. Encouraging and supporting young people in their efforts to start up small and micro enterprises is therefore vital. And it's essential that we urgently tackle some of the many obstacles that budding entrepreneurs face in our region, such as excessively bureaucratic company registration, lack of access to financing, and inadequate bankruptcy protection. Young people 
generally, be they in Africa or in anywhere in the world, um, they are not only potentially capable, but are a resource for growth and social development if gainfully and productively engaged. One small step we can do is to show the experience, successful experience, and also uh, the share the experience, including mistake as well. I think. Uh, uh, the future has a lot to do uh, uh, with uh, young people designing uh, their way forward. Uh, and also, I would very much encourage um, getting an NGO or, or building bridges between policy makers and uh, between uh, the end recipient of, of whatever service is related to entrepreneurship. We brought some pretty bright minds onto the table. And what we learned was there's a mismatch between what people are learning and what people, what's needed in the labor market. And so, for instance, in Jordan, where I was a couple of weeks ago, unemployment is now 14%. What's really striking is unemployment for youth is 24%. And what that tells us is the youth that are going to these institutions to further their education, rather than benefiting, have a higher level of expectation and a lower level of employability. Instead of being symbol of hope, young people have become the human faces of poverty. This is a collective failure on multiple fronts. Facing this critical challenge, the only feasible solution is through partnerships. We will need concerted efforts by governments, business, and schools and communities. Simply put, we need teamwork. Everyone has a stake in addressing the youth employment challenge, and therefore everyone should assume the responsibility. And second, only collaborative approaches will produce real outcomes. I think this came out quite clearly. The most important thing is that we, we, we take that mindset of putting other people first. I think if we can step outside of ourselves, each one of us, then we'll be able to deal with not only youth unemployment, but education, health care, and everything in between.